All right, so I'm at the testing stage now. Uh, this is the power board and this is the control board once again. Uh, I drilled and tapped all these holes um, for all the uh, the heat sinks and all the MOSFETs and everything. Uh, man, that was a crap ton of holes. And those were all 440, 4-40 size taps. Uh, so took a good chunk of patience and time, but uh, got her done. Uh, of course, I haven't polished up the bars yet or anything. This is just for testing, so uh, once I'm ready to put it all together, I'll, I'll polish up the bars. Um, so right now on the power board, I have uh, two MOSFETs soldered in along with the drive circuitry for those two MOSFETs. So just two for now, just to try everything out. I have my jumper links here installed on the board. You can see how that all works. Um, this wire, I actually haven't soldered in yet or anything. Uh, I want it to be orange, but I don't have an orange wire on me. So uh, I'm just putting it in there for now just for testing and uh, replace that with a proper wire later on. I uh, just don't feel like, don't want to solder that in because then I'll have to desolder it. Um, so you can see here my control board is running. I have this powered up from a 13 volt supply that's just off camera here. Um, I also have another power supply uh, hooked up to my uh, power section here, uh, not turned on. The camera's actually sitting on it so it'll probably buzz a little bit when I turn it on. Um, but you can see here this red light is my uh, hardware trip for battery current. Uh, my hardware uh, is tripped for battery current right now because I have no current sensors and because the signal is pulled low and uh, when the signal is low that's when the battery current is tripped so I can just uh, reset that by putting this resistor in there you can just put that to some nominal value that doesn't trip the uh, hardware overcurrent um, and then of course once I do that then the PWM signal actually gets through to the power board so I had quite a few goofs here um, on the control board at least. Uh, on the power board I don't see anything yet. I think I pretty much did that perfectly. Uh, but on the control board um, had some issues. Uh, number one issue was that the uh, power input to these DC to DC converters was actually reverse polarity. <laughs> uh, and of course you know that's my fault definitely. Um, but the TDK Lambda datasheet cer certainly didn't help me out on that at all. So I'll show you what issues I ran into in that uh, on the screen in a bit here. All right, so here's the data sheet for the TDK Lambda power supply or the DC to DC converter. Um, this is the footprint I was working off of and uh, you can see here in this box down below it says the pinouts and their function, pins one through seven. And here on the uh, layout here it has pins uh, one through seven. Now the reason why I think I found this so confusing is because this, this view here it doesn't actually say what view it is and as I found out just recently this is actually a view from the underside so we're actually looking at this from the pin side which is extremely confusing normally you'd put a normally most data sheets will have a view of the component from the top side the way you'd view it as it's placed on the board but no this is actually from the underside and I think that's why I, me I messed up my pins because I got very confused uh, because of this drawing here and in addition, uh, if I scroll down here, uh, see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, so they have this drawing here, and this is from the top. And I mean, here it says top view, which is great, but I just wish in the other drawing it said bottom view. It would have made it a much more straightforward. So somehow in conjunction with looking at this view and the other bottom view, which is not labeled as a bottom view, I got really confused on the pinout there. So, I mean, of course it's still my fault in the end, but uh, man, this data sheet didn't really help me out much. It really would have helped if it would have said bottom view here. Uh, it's an extremely simple thing to add and that would have completely avoided any issues I had with this uh, with this data sheet. Now, now, strange enough, I also had this data sheet for the TDK Lambda DC to DC converter and I was also looking at this one and this confused me even more because once again this here is the bottom view which once again is not labeled and then on to the over to the right here the part is you can see it's flipped but of course I didn't know which was the top and which was the bottom and then of course on this drawing here they drop all the pin designators so I, I didn't realize right away that it was flipped uh, in this drawing versus this drawing I, it didn't it didn't occur to me that it was flipped until I looked at this afterwards 
Um, and, you know, they certainly didn't help out here by putting, you know, it doesn't say it's top view, this doesn't say it's bottom view. There's no pin numbers on this diagram over here. So, I mean, man, like, this is, it's really annoying. Like, you expect from, from, when you pay top dollar for a top quality DC to DC converter, you'd expect top quality in the data sheet too, but no, in this case, this data sheet could use a lot of help here, a lot of work to improve it. Um, so yeah, I think that's why I messed up those uh, pinouts on the DC to DC converter there. I got, I got my pins mixed up and I got the part completely flipped. Uh, luckily the part still fit, fitted where I intended, it was just the actual function of the pins was flipped, not, not the physical uh, physical dimensions, just the functions was flipped. Uh, so I have a bunch of, I have some mod wires under there to uh, correct those issues. Uh, also, somehow, I got my current sensors completely ass backwards and the battery current sensor was in the position for the motor current sensor and, and vice versa there. Um, so I just had to swap the signals. I, I don't know how I messed that up, but somehow I messed that up. So I have a couple little more jumpers under there to fix that. And uh, yeah. So those were the two major issues, where it was the swapped current sensor signals and the swapped uh, polarity on the DC to DC converters. Uh, once again, I have no idea how I got the current sensor one wrong, but the, the DC to DC converter one uh, was definitely partially my fault, but also partially the data sheet's fault, and I'll, I'll show you that in a bit. It's, it's pretty, pretty annoying, I gotta say. Um, what else? Uh, well, I made a mistake with the display port. Uh, I got my data pins completely ass backwards. <laughs> uh, but I consider that a minor issue because this is just to help with uh, debugging. It's not really important for the actual operation of the, the unit. So I just soldered on pins on the bottom there. And by plugging in the connector from the bottom, uh, it gets all the pins in the right orientation there. So I can still get a display out and, and debug stuff. But uh, when it comes time to assemble this thing together, I'm just going to be desoldering the pins I have on the underside there and just uh, getting rid of them. Another minor issue I had is that uh, I realized that my uh, my uh, hardware overcurrent or my hardware overcurrent scheme here uh, was also completely ass backwards in that this was originally an AND gate um, which I thought was correct at the time but I completely forgot that the optocoupler uh, I have under here actually inverts the signal. So what would happen before uh, before I corrected this uh, by swapping a NAND gate in here uh, before it was an AND gate uh, when it was an AND gate what would happen is that when the hardware current would trip uh, it wouldn't let the PWM signal through which was great but the signal would get stuck high so that it would actually lock up the MOSFET solid on here which is the exact opposite of what I wanted uh, because I completely forgot about the uh, optocoupler there uh, inverting the signal so all I did was swap in a NAND gate there and that uh, re-inverts the signal and uh, corrects the problem so I'm really glad I used sockets here because I just swapped out that chip uh, in about two seconds and that uh, corrected the issue so now when the hardware overcurrent trips uh, the pulse width modulation signal is uh, fixed low and that turns off all the MOSFETs here so we're all good. Uh, now I've been doing some preliminary testing on this stuff here. I'll show you what's happening on the meter here. So let me flick this power supply on. I apologize for any buzzing. So I have a load hooked up between uh, the motor minus bar here and the battery plus bar here. It's just a, uh, a couple coils of wire to uh, get some inductance. I hope you can see this. Uh, right on the side here, here's my coils of wire. I have two coils of wire there uh, first to, to get some inductance there and then I have some resistance in there too to, to represent some, uh, some, some resist resistance. So I have the power supply set here for about 5 volts. Uh, just nice and low just to start with here. And my pulse width modulation signal is getting through because there's no hardware overcurrent or anything like that. So now when I come along here and I measure the, the gate on the low side MOSFETs, I get, there's my 15 kilohertz switching frequency. The, uh, right now the switching frequency is just set for an arbitrary 15 kilohertz, which uh, I think will work pretty good. Uh, 
probably end up tweaking that a little bit uh, in the end. And right now the duty cycle is eh, 46%. Now, so this is the low side MOSFET here. Um, if I measure the high side MOSFET, which is the synchronous MOSFETs, you'll see that, there we go, we're at 54% duty cycle. So there is some switching going on there with the gate, which is great. Confirms everything's work, everything's working properly. And we can measure frequency on that again, and, and there's our 15 kilohertz again. So uh, the synchronous rectification is working. And if I disconnect the power from the synchronous rectification circuit, by just pulling out this wire, and uh, measuring this again, you'll see that uh, the, the, the uh, synchronous rectification no longer drives the gate there. There's no frequency on that pin. Uh, there's no, no duty cycle or anything. So uh, my, my synchronous rectification works perfectly. Uh, as far as I can determine with my, my fluke meter here. Uh, this obviously is not the best way to do this uh, measurement. I, this is, I don't have a scope, a oscilloscope with me. Um, I've actually never really had the need for one. I've always had one available for me. So, I mean, at university there were scopes. I mean, at work I have there's a scope. So, um, I haven't got around to actually buying one myself yet. Um, I'll probably just end up bringing this whole setup into work and then uh, probing it at work with the oscilloscope there because it's a pretty uh, pretty nice unit. Um, so yeah, this isn't the best way to be me measuring these things with the with the fluke here, uh, but. I mean, considering the highest frequency on this board here is about 15 kilohertz, um, the meter works actually pretty good for this. Uh, it's it's not that bad. Um, it's fast enough to uh, uh, detect all these things. All right. Um, what else uh, can I measure here? <coughs> so I suppose I can show you this. Uh, really straightforward. If I measure the... Uh, gate voltage here. You'll see it's 5.3 volts. That's that's the average of course. And if I pull out my resistor here now and I trip the hardware overcurrent, well bam, there it goes down to zero so there's no gate drive at all, which is exactly what we want. I can put that resistor back in and it starts back up again. And there we go. So I think, I mean as far as I can tell everything's working really good here. Um, I'm going to populate up the rest of these capacitors and connectors here. And uh, I'm not sure if I'll put in the current sensors quite yet, because I, I do like being able to fiddle, fiddle around with the current sensor signals here. Um, I don't have any uh, tracking, or uh, I guess, uh, software in here yet that actually reads the throttle and does any kind of control. It's just spitting out a 45% duty cycle right now, just arbitrarily, just so I can test, test this stuff here. Um, assembly of this actually very easy. I was surprised these ring, this ring terminal methodology I have here works absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's really easy to put together and you know bolt these down and I can remove the bars and I can take the heat sinks off and it just it works really well and I can see this thing uh, I don't really see how, any other way how you can set this up any better. I mean you can see the pins of the MOSFETs just go straight into these ring terminals and then bolted directly to these copper bars here I don't think you can improve this at all. It's just it's a really good setup. Um, so I think I'll show you some more of the metal work here in a sec. And uh, yeah, I'll show you that. All right, so here's the board powered up. Here's my three uh, PWM, uh, or I guess low side MOSFET related connections. There's one for the pulse width modulation signal, uh, one for the power, which is 12 volts in this case, and one for ground. And that just goes over here uh, and goes into the board here and then gets uh, uh, relayed to the uh, MOSFET drivers. Uh, same thing with the so somewhat similar thing here with the synchronous rectification section. Um, the power for that uh, comes from these two wires here. This one's just kind of floating in there just to do testing with. And that comes back to this connector here. Uh, you can see I got kind of a light show going on here. Uh, it's super handy. Uh, I got uh, power lights for all the all the voltage rails, uh, including the external one even over there. Everything's fused, which is great. Um, I just have an arbitrary flashing LED here to indicate that the microcontroller is alive and doing something. Um, and like I said, I've I've been uh, using my resistor here to uh, either 
you know, reset the, that's the battery current, uh, hardware over current limit there. Uh, that works great. I can reset that with this resistor here just by, you know, pulling the signal uh, high because the battery current uh, works on that, you know, the lower the signal goes, the when the signal goes below a certain point it trips. So I can uh, make that not trip by uh, pulling it high. Uh, exact opposite with the motor current is I can uh, make it go off, I can set it off by uh, pulling it high. So I just did that there. So that's the motor current uh, hardware over current. And I can reset that just by doing nothing. And yeah, that's about it. So you can see here, I'll show you some of the issues I had on this board here. Uh, so there's my uh, pin header there that shouldn't be there. I just soldered that on to get a display out connection. Uh, here's a couple jumper wires to reverse the current sensor signals. I, I goofed that completely. That was my fault. Um, but that's a pretty reliable bodge there I did. Um, and here's the DC to DC, DC converter bodges that I had to do to get everything working. Uh, you can see that uh, um, actually uh, in this section of the board it's pretty easy to make modifications because there's no ground plane. Uh, if I had to make these modifications in a section of the board where there was a ground plane that's quite a bit harder because you have much much higher chance of uh, shorting things out to ground. Oh, uh, one more thing. I also found out that uh, my resistance value here for this optocoupler uh, was a bit high so I had to lower that and the power dissipation would have been a bit too high with just one resistor there so I just whacked on a a through hole resistor there across that connector and, and that did the job. So that's my control board. She still looks really pretty from the top though. There's no there's no bodges on the top at all. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, here's the uh, main power board. I drilled out all these copper bars. Uh, copper is actually quite tricky to drill out as I found out. I've never really worked with copper much. Uh, like massive bars like this. I've never had to drill, any, drill it out or anything like that. Um, has the nasty habit of grabbing drill bits and breaking them. So you really gotta kind of drill at the right speed and don't go too fast and make sure there's lots of lubrication while you're doing it. Alright, and then I got my uh, two MOSFETs in here and bolted up. Uh, they're not even tight or anything, they're just kind of in there, loosey-goosey. Um, and then I'll show you, if I can, which I can't, I gotta undo these wires. I'll show you some of the uh, the work I did on the aluminum uh, underneath. I'm actually really happy with the way I designed these boards by the way. I'm really happy that I did this uh, uh, free wire, fly wire configuration because uh, it makes it super easy to uh, test and uh, work on this thing because I can have the board side by side and probe them both at the same time. I don't have to have them uh, stacked or anything. So here's the uh, setup down here. So I have all these holes drilled and tapped here for the MOSFETs. I don't have a bolt in there for for this one at this time, of course. Uh, that bolt's just kind of loose in there. Uh, this block here is just a support. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't heat sink any uh, any uh, any energy or heat or anything. It's just a physical support. Um, I have holes on the bottom here that I'm going to tap. I did make one screw up there. I got a drill bit stuck and I had to get it out from the back side. Uh, but not a big deal. Um, there's quite a few uh, more drilled and tap holes along here for the MOSFETs. And of course, uh, because these are through bolts, you know, all the aluminum bars are tapped uh, through here. So these, these uh, screws or bolts just thread right in. All right, so I think that's all I have for you in this video. Um, I basically confirmed everything works here. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put on the rest of the MOSFETs, I think and uh, populate up the rest of that control board and uh, do some more testing on something else. I don't know what it'll be, but uh, I gotta figure that out. I was thinking maybe of just using a uh, an automotive starter motor as a load or a, a test motor. I think that might work pretty good. But uh, if you have any ideas, let me know. Alright, till next time, I'll see ya.